Hey, travelers. Found Troy. Uh, hi. And he's, I, I found him out of a ditch. Uh, he's barely making it. Barely making it, but I'll, I'll survive just for you guys. Oh. This is the last ride of Troy. What, what an honor. <laughs> what an honor that you decided to do a vlog with us for your, your last go around. My last go around on this world. Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, can't tell you how. If, how I, if I sound disgusting, it's because I feel <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, while Troy's feeling disgusting, let's give a shout out to Hot Passport. Don't drink without yours. <laughs> and uh, new for 2020, I know we mention this every week, but you can get the Hot Passport book and the app. What? Yeah. The app is so much easier for me. Right? Yeah. I always yeah. got my phone. You always have your phone. You never know when you're going to be at a brewery either. Sometimes you're traveling, you're like, oh, we got an hour to kill. What's right? this? Yeah. Right? What a deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you got to always have. We with uh, we had a guy comment on on YouTube last week. Yeah, that uh, he just sewed his hot passport to himself. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, so you could always try that. If Some you want. people have insanely ingenious ideas <laughs> that I'm at simultaneously impressed and horrified. I'm not brave enough to do that. I, you know, I I uh, I'll put it in my pocket, and if I forget it, I forget it. But but they got the app now. Yeah, they got the app now, so you don't have to sew it to yourself anymore. <laughs> Unless you want to, I mean, I we're not going to stop you. Yeah, no, heaven, heaven you're, forbid. You're an adult. Make your own decisions. That's right. You know. Uh, so uh, we're continuing on the twelve beers of Christmas. We're on to beers uh, seven, eight, and nine. Seven, eight, nine, mother truckers. Yeah, that's right. Let's crack one. And uh, I'll give you a shout out to um, Candace at Coffee Grounds in Eau Claire. She uh, has a great beer selection out there. So if if any of you are in the greater Eau Claire area, you can go and get your Christmas beers over at Coffee Grounds. There's quite a selection out there. And there's, you know, obviously there's some higher uh, higher priced ones. You know, and this doesn't pertain to most people watching this, but Candace is truly a staple of what Eau Claire beer. Community. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, anyone that is into beer in Eau Claire knows Candace. Yeah. Yeah, she is a, she's very much been at the center of a lot of good beer coming through this town, so. Thank Cheers you. to you, Kansas. Thank, thank you, Candace. She'll never so, watch this. But... No. <laughs> she openly admitted that she does not watch it, but that's okay. Yeah. I don't so, believe her. Uh, the, the first beer that we have for tonight is from Deschutes. It's in Bend, Oregon. It's called Jubilale. 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 I don't get it. No? Yeah. No? That one's lost on you? That's all right. Uh, you know, the label... It doesn't give away much, does not it? Not really. Yeah. No? It's uh, It's got a deer. Ooh. I mean, you know, we're also diving into winter beers, Christmas, uh, winter warmers, as they're often called. And they're yeah. very, I did a bunch of research on this style a couple years ago for a presentation I was putting together. Yeah. And I came to the realization there is no real defining factors. Just it wouldn't it wouldn't seem that way. I mean, the other beers that we've had, it says a winter ale. Yeah. Well, higher alcohol, usually malty, usually some molasses -y flavors. With spices. Spices means, occasionally. Means maybe some cocoa. Maybe, maybe you get spice on it. Maybe you Definitely don't. higher alcohol, though. Did I yeah. say that? Like, we definitely are. This one's on the lower end. It's only 6.7. Especially for us. Geez. So, yeah. 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 This is a light beer for. Still for 65 the IBUs, though. Yeah. Yeah. So, I would, I would expect it to be a little on the hoppy side. I mean, my taste buds are going to be not up to normal. I get I get a little bit of spice on the nose. I get molasses on the nose. And it's got a hoppier presence to it. Not like overly hopped. Yeah, I won't be able to break this, like I said, down as, yeah. as well as I usually can. But, you know, that molasses really comes through. That, uh, that's the only thing I'm really tasting. <laughs> For a minute there, I thought I just opened up a, a thing of Carol syrup, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. But, you know, if it's you're going to go with that molasses <clears throat> of flavor, which is actually a flavor profile I really like, you need hop to balance that out. Otherwise, that would just be like drinking Carol syrup. Well, and I, and I think a lot of people mistake the molasses for hops, you know, because you're getting you're getting a bitterness, you're getting a bite. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Back in my, uh, you know... Noob, noob days of craft your learning. Beer. Days? Yeah, my learning days. I was often mistaking molasses for some oh. kind of hop. You know, some in spite, but they can also be tricky too because a lot of English, especially probably you're looking at ten years ago, a lot yeah. of IPAs were more malty and oftentimes had that more molasses. -y, especially the English beers 
more toffee, molasses flavor to balance out the hops. Oh, the good old days. The good old 10 years ago before. Yeah. No one knew what a hazy IPA was. <laughs> Unfiltered beers were considered crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, you know, in, in that tradition, I, I could see why you made that, con- that, mm-hmm. that incorrect assessment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm used to being incorrect, so that was nothing I mean, new. We, we all get married, so we can just find that out daily. <sighs> Either verbally or non-verbally or both. You know, if I'm going to be just completely honest, the yeah. Schutz is not my favorite brewery. Yeah. But I do like this beer. I say they're a brewery that that's managed to stick around for a long time, though. Yeah. They've been around. Yeah. They've, they've they've worn the test of time. <clears throat> but that being said, uh, this is a, a pretty solid beer. So way to go to Schutz. You can work on the labels, though. Yeah. I don't. I feel like it's gotten not- worse over the years. <laughs> it used to be, I think, a bit more poppy. Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's it's uh it's also, do, not not everybody has as good of a graphic designer as we do. Oh yeah, you guys you know, want that? get yourself a Stephanie. That's the <laughs> that's the real secret. This uh so mm. speaking of graphic design, this next one really just jumped out at me when I was getting beer. Mm. So nothing I think that was created in Word. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, the, the world of craft beer, just because people are making an artsy beverage doesn't mean they have their design down all the time. I, you know, if you can have, if you can have fun with it at the same time, you know, you don't have to take yourself too seriously because honestly, at the end of the day, it's just beer. Are you sure that's not a label for hostess Christmas cakes or something? It, well, maybe it doubles as maybe they make labels for hostess and course and donk Christmas ale. Yeah. It is a Belgian beer. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Troy. Don't go breaking stuff now. Break it if I want. Okay, fine. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna right, examine just, just this. take a look at it. Mm-hmm. It's uh it's got a very nineties nineties ish feel. Yeah. yeah. You know that's a that's a pretty scene on there. Yeah. You know. But uh mm-hmm. that's I, also- s- I like to celebrate the nineties on a pretty regular basis. Right. Yeah? The nineties. The 90s. Yeah. Here's to the 90s. Course and dunk. I kind of remember most of them. I mean, yeah. I was around for the entire 90s. I just, you know, I was also really stupid back no. then. I'm really stupid now. No much stuff <laughs> went over my head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you get you get some. Uh, yeah, I don't know some a- of the Belgian yeasty. Yeah, my notes m- on the nose. My plugged up nose ain't getting. That's crap, what I'm. That's what I'm getting. Just looking at the the head, the bubbles. They're very tight. Yeah, uh, like fine, almost uh, champagne ass bubbles, which would automatically just trigger for me like a Belgian-y look to it. Mm-hmm. You don't get that with a stout. Yeah, no, 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 or an IPA. No, you can actually learn a lot about a beer if you just look at the foam. Yeah, it's taking when you're at home tonight and drinking your beer. Look at the foam. Yeah, yeah. See what see what it tells you. And then, uh, if anybody questions you, just tell them to shut up. Well, don't say it in like any crowd because you're going to sound like a crazy person. Right. If you're amongst beer drinkers, get some get some heads. So out. so this is refermented in the bottle. Yeah. Ooh, she's sweet, yeah. bubbly. I'd say a little lighter in the body than the Jubal Ale, and that's where that more uh, that that finer carbonation really comes into place. Carbonation can really make or break uh, the heaviness of a beer sometimes. Is that and I know you can't taste anything, but is that is that like anise? Yeah, I'm little definitely. little little bit of anise. I don't know. No, I'm not getting any anise, <clears throat> but I'm also not. I'm, to me, this also <laughs> kind of just tastes like molasses. <laughs> I'm not gonna hide this. Any, this does not have the bite of the of molasses. This tastes just like jubile oil to me, <laughs> except bubblier. So, <laughs> so if you're sick over the holidays, it really doesn't matter what you drink. It all just tastes like molasses. But. You know, these these kind of beers do pair well for, with your Christmas dinner, though. If you're thinking about you're drinking, you're eating like a ham or a prime oh, rib yeah, or yeah. a heavy meat. And that, that lighter body like these two are a good complement to that meat. And yet you get that flavor that kind of that carries that, that like, you know, that roasted flavor, that, you know, red meat, kind of like red wine would. Yeah. So these these are appropriate beers. Also, they'd be good for like dessert, too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they're not very, not overly sweet, so they're not gonna be sweet on sweet like you would, you know. Yeah, like you know, we did that bonbon a couple weeks ago, yep. and that yeah. would have been almost. I'd say you had that with a chocolate cake. That'd be a lot, whereas this would be more of a subtle uh, right. pairing, you know. Yeah. 
Very good, though. I I love molasses flavors, and they don't get used nearly enough in brewing until Christmas time. So this is like the one time year you get to kind of, if you like that flavor profile, <clears throat> indulge in it. And you know what you would... You would think that winter style ales or beers would be around longer than they are. No, they're no. really not. It's it's about a three month window, and they're in and out. I would say month and a half at best. Yeah. Well, there's there's some residuals, you know, yeah, that, didn't, that didn't get bought. The and, weak ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you. But I mean, it, it, they'll you be know, in your blow a cart for uh, St. Patrick's Day. Oktoberfest almost stays around longer than winter beers do. Yeah. The weak ones. Yeah, the weak ones. Yeah, <laughs> those There's, gazelles there are the ones that. that we go after. <laughs> so this last one is uh, from Brewery Omegang, and of, I saved it for last because it's barrel aged, and uh, it's a uh, bourbon barrel aged adoration. So it's it's kind of got a um, a religious feel to it. So if that's not your thing, I apologize, but also I'm not sorry at the same time because I think it's going to be a delicious beer. Uh, it is a Christmas beer, so that's that would be where the theme is coming from. What does adoration mean? Those are the three wise men. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. I get it. Well, you think this will make us wise? I highly doubt it. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> counterintuitive. <laughs> well, first of all... I've had a lot of beers to this point. None of them have made me very wise. Cooperstown is the home of Brewery Amagang in Pencil. Uh, is it New York or Pennsylvania? New York. Pretty sure it's New York. Cooperstown, New York. Uh, Brewery Amagang. Yeah. Brewery Amagang is probably the <clears throat> best mass-produced Belgian beer in the United States. I can't think of a better Belgian brewery that you could get in majority of the states that are as good as this. So. Whenever I have a chance to try a brewery, I'm a gang, I always get excited because I've never had a bad beer from them. Three Philosophers is like a staple. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm legitimately excited for this. And really for a barrel aged. It's 11%. So, yeah. yeah. But I mean the color on it. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a, you know. On the CRM scale, that's probably only a 10. Yeah. CRM standing for uh, SRM. <laughs> Holy crap. The SRM the standard. I knew what you were going for, but I didn't want to correct you. I get, I get hit a lot when I correct. <laughs> this, the standard referencing method. Uh, yeah. This cold is messing with my brain. That is how you judge color, one being water or zero being water color. So or Bud clear, Light. Bud Light being a one. Coors Light. Uh, 40 being a Guinness. Yeah. And everything falls in between there. So I'd say this is probably a 10 on there. Not that anyone actually cares. Maybe one dude at home is like, oh. Now, now the question is, can you smell this one? I get a hint of bourbon. <laughs> well, I, I'm I'm not sick, so I will tell you there's more than a hint of bourbon. Oh, hello. There she is. Maybe that'll clear you up. You get everything? Oh, yeah, yeah. It actually feels better. <laughs> That's the only thing I was missing in my life is the adoration. <laughs> Whatever that means. But really, for a boozy beer, this is crazy smooth. Smooth. Once again, we're, we're talking about tiny, fine bubbles, yeah. highly carbonated. I think you see that as a trend, of, not only in beer, but in like, uh, you know, people usually drink champagne or something for Christmas. Yeah. Like, there's just something about that tiny bubble that people like around this time of year, which, you know, once again, it's not often do you get a, a highly carbonated beer with these kind of more darker molasses-y flavors right. any other time of year. So once again, another another fun fact that you can bore people with at the water cooler. Well, and, and you can sing tiny bubbles. Yeah, mm, you could. Tiny bubbles. No. I mean, don't know, don't know that one. Don't know Don Ho. I've never heard the name Don Ho in my life. <laughs> is that really the guy? Yes, that, I've heard the song. Is that really? Who's yeah, that was the guy that sang it. Don Ho. He was he was Hawaiian. Oh, Ho was he? Ho H O Don uh -huh. Ho. No Hawaiian Hawaiian man named Don. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but his last name was Ho. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. Now, now you know. Now yeah, I know. Now that you Don know Don Ho. Things tiny bubbles. Yeah, it was that was it. That's a one hit wonder. He was a man that liked to drink too. Apparently. Oh yeah. Well, he yeah. liked drinking tiny bubbles. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. That's. See, you if you sit at home and you look at your beer, and you see the tiny bubbles, you too can probably come up with a song that'll make you famous. Even though Troy won't know who you are. Yeah, I will. I will never know your name. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I'm surprised you even know my name. <laughs> so anyway, on that note, Landon. We, 
<laughs> yeah, I had to think about it for a while. Yeah, I thought so. I mean, so I mean, we we progressed up on alcohol. This guy was like six. This guy was eight. That was eleven. Yeah. Overall, though, I wouldn't say there was a huge difference in like body or mouthfeel. No, other than I would say we started off with heavy molasses taste, not so much thickness, but yeah. more of the bitterness that molasses w- would bring. Yeah, that uh, that stringent almost. Right. Yeah. You know, the, the molasses flavor that you'd get out of like a ginger snap. Right? This might be one of the more consistent <clears throat> beer flights we've done where everything was very on like point Yeah. as far as like similarities outside of like any barrel age thing we've ever done. Usually yeah. it's like, oh, I got an IPA and we got a stout here, you know? So in that sense, like, it was good. Well, I'm glad I dis- didn't disappoint you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm disappointing the rest of you because I'm just sitting here like, I don't know, tastes like beer. <laughs> That's what happens when you're sick. Uh, I'm actually keeping myself. The, I'm keeping my stuff together. The, really the well. fact, the fact that you can even point out that it's beer, that's probably yeah. pretty good. If you would have saw me literally 30 seconds before we started filming, <laughs> I thought I was going to die. I'm keeping it together, and then immediately after this, I'm going to sound crumble. sound like you smoke a carton of cigarettes. Uh, that's the best I've sounded all day too. <laughs> <sighs> well, thank you for holding it together for for me and for everybody else out there that you that see watches one this. tear rolled on my cheek. That's like the the pain being hidden. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, pain is beauty. I, I think <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. In that case, <laughs> should be in pain more often. I was like, yeah. I sh- at this point, I should be like a really good looking dude. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I, somebody did tell yeah. me I looked like John Travolta the other day. Wow! Somebody comes like, "You look like John Travolta." Are they drunk? I mean, I was at a crappy bar, so oh, yes. well, yeah, there I you mean, go. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, at least when now people wear their beer goggles, <laughs> if maybe you need to go to crappy bars. I mean, with you just didn't look like the regulars. Yeah. Well, then I'm like, well, I wish well, I could that. dance like Travolta. I mean, yeah. like, if I could take one skill of that man, I'd like to see you try. Oh, I, that'd be amazing. I watched him dance the other night on the <clears throat> on the television. I was like, he was doing the mashed potato, which I didn't know was a thing until he showed me. And I'm like, you might as well be, you might as well be doing backflips. I can't do that. <laughs> well, just keep looking like him in yeah. crappy bars. Yeah, just, that'll that'll do you. Just get terribly ugly with age. I can do that. Yeah, I can do that too. <laughs> Anyway, on that note, Hot Passport. Get yours at hotpassport.com. And don't forget at Pablo. Yes. And we still have tickets for the last three. Yeah, uh, those shows are selling out. So if you want to get on the the gravy train, now is the time. Surly sold out, unfortunately, for those that, uh, I mean, fortunate for us, but unfortunate for those that still want to get in on the There's still going to be an after party if you want to come drink. Yes, there will still be an after party at the firehouse. We'll we'll, we'll have more times and specifics on that. That way I can go to work uh, on Wednesday hungover. Ah. That'll be fun. All of us are going to have a fun Wednesday. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, the the other three. So we'll have the information below. Check it out there. We'd love to see you. There's some nice hotels in Eau Claire, and it's a good excuse to get away from work during the middle of the week. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, and so we saw three plan. They're all going to be fun. We got three yeah. sheeps and Odell and left hand. So no, not Odell. Odell's the last one. The Is it? One. Yep. I thought we had uh, the Michigan one. No. All right. Founders is two. Founders, is too. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, do you know? Do you know where the information for that is better? Below. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, like things you should check like us. This. Yeah. just like it. It doesn't like, take any energy. Just do it. Like, subscribe, <sighs> follow us on all the other social media channels: Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. And then uh, pick your poison. Yeah. And then, of course, comment then, because then pick your poison because we'll comment back to you. We like to hear from you. Yeah, Landon's so, good at the typings. I like to type. Sure thing. I misspell things, so I don't. Absolutely, type. that's why you know Detroit's not responding to you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> until next week, everybody. Prost. <laughs> By now, you've probably figured out that we like visiting different breweries, and we've been pretty vocal about one of our favorite travel companions, Hot Passport. When you visit any of the breweries highlighted inside, you either get two for one pints or buy one, get one. That means you only have to visit a fraction of the breweries we do to get your money's worth. Visit hotpassport.com to get one featuring your state today. Hot Passport. 
don't drink without yours. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.